All right, check one, check one, cool. All right, thank you all for showing up so far. Um, I know sometimes we get people more, uh, some more people that trickle in, so some of my students are here, and thank you to our other guests as well for uh, being here. So um, my name is Jules. Uh, some of you may know me as Julio. Um, I am somewhat of an interactive media specialist. I have my own agency that works with brands and clients to look at different executions and campaigns for involvement with their users and learners. So uh, I've been consulting with the LA, uh, LA School District for about a year now just for integrating web tools into their curriculum. And so we've been able to kind of problem solve and iterate on some of the integrations that can occur within some of their curriculum. Now, uh, in practice, I've used some of these tools. Um, some of my past students are here who have been able to learn about how to use these tools in more of an experiential, uh, experiential way. So anyways, um, we're going to look at 3D environments and how to kind of quickly navigate those. So I kind of lead this off to say that online learning can be cumbersome for both the learner and the educator. Um, this uh, presentation was geared towards educators primarily, but you may have an online seminar that you have um, started, and you maybe have already asked an icebreaker question. And to no avail, you have muted mics, muted cameras, and that's perfectly fine based on comfortability, but you're getting nothing but zero responses, actually. Um, so some of us may have been here. Um, and I'm just here to say that there are other ways to, of course, engage with learners that is past beyond Zoom. So we're just going to be looking at that. So the tool we're looking at is called framevr.io. It is a uh, web-based meeting platform where you can integrate 3D environments into Canvas pages, into Google Classrooms. Now, um, a little bit of what that looks and feels like. We have kind of a typical learning page. And these pages uh, can just be you know, embedded, as I mentioned. So I'm using my mouse here to click around in this 3D environment. I'm using my keyboard to kind of navigate those. Um, there's all sorts of tools that you can already um, use. So you can drag and drop your PDFs. You can drag and drop presentations, 3D models. Um, there's drawing boards that are already integrated. So um, that being said, uh, you know, it's really just a matter of like how comfortable can we make educators uh, into uh, using new tools. Uh, the biggest uh, hurdle for them is how much time do I have to update my curriculum? Um, do I really have time to enhance the, uh, the learning experience I'm already using? Well, usually the answer is yes, because uh, they already have videos, they already have presentation decks, they already have their content. Um, this is, of course, just adding to that. So uh, typically with Frame, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's used outside of the window, but there's uh, kind of a, this daunting idea of 3D, and there's, of course, okay, different ways to get 3D models. There's a bunch of open source um, 3D models that are out there. Uh, Smithsonian published uh, and released a lot of their 3D models already. You can, of course, look at different uh, purchasable websites, but there's a vast array of three, uh, free 3D models. Uh, made by creators of all alike. Um, so uh, to add content into the space, uh, there's usually a plus button here on tools like this. So with Frame, you've got everything from uh, Photosphere models to uh, embedded 3D library models. Uh, it's linked to the Sketchfab library, so there's already a vast uh, array of models available. You can, of course, use uh, AI tools to quickly and easily integrate new models. These are all for learning and educational purposes. So um, the use of uh, AI and uh, generation models is typically uh, how quickly and how much quality um, can I integrate new ideas into my learning uh, space. So um, that being said, uh, other Skybox models are usually um, available as well. Frame actually just uh, integrated the Google Street View into their platform. So all you have to do is search a location, and you will be brought there. Uh, you no longer have to upload photospheres and uh, put them in uh, one by one. Um, so uh, other tools kind of explore this idea as well. So uh, our learning cr classroom example that we've been looking at is a uh, Idaho watershed system learning space where we learn about fish. We learn about the different uh, uh, ecological principles to how their migration patterns can affect the environment and how we affect that environment as well. So as, uh, as, as important as, as it is for a teacher to teach about that topic, 
um, you know, you're talking about these locations in Idaho, but we're talking about bringing them to those locations even further through photospheres, through 3D environments. Um, so this is all just to say these are just different use cases for this tool. So this tool is multi-user, of course, so we've got um, people that can just kind of chime in to a classroom. So instead of a Zoom call, picture, hey everyone, we're going to show up at this Zoom room in sorts. Well, it's a frame room, but we're going to show up at this link during our set classroom time, and that is our virtual classroom experience. Mm -hmm. So you can create these spaces to be single user only or multi user. Um, single user meaning one person shows up in one session and the other person can show up on another session. Uh, separate from each other, you can have passive learning or interactive learning. You can have a dedicated audio zone. So if I have a space where I've got maybe a quiz, so we're learning about fish, I've got content in one space and a learning module in the other, um, I would then dictate to my uh, students, hey, we're going to learn about this uh, fish, so um, why don't we separate into two groups, group A, decide what you think the answer is, and group B, uh, do the same. So um, I mentioned XR as a whole um, and how this is a web-based tool. That means uh, anyone can access this space from a mobile phone to a laptop to a VR headset, and we'll actually be able to join that today uh, just to kind of showcase that. So yeah, just, uh, of course, some right, visuals help. Um, yeah, VR headset as well, so the, the, there's no coding involved. You're just putting on the headset, signing into the space, and you're in. Plenty of templates. Uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely like, templates are what educators actually care a lot about. Um, how easy is it to, you know, um, integrate right their, their learning curriculum into spaces that are involved. So uh, templates are a great way to get uh, educators on board and administrators, because they are de the uh, decision makers. Yeah, uh, learning spaces of all kinds. They've got classrooms already built, which is great. Um, you can, of course, make custom environments. You upload your own models, upload your own environments. This is great for uh, experiential learners as well. Uh, even go to the moon, play some basketball. Uh, why not? It's, uh, it's good activity, maybe in between topics. So this all kind of comes down to, like, OK, how does uh, 3D environments integrate with actual learning models? So we're looking at interactive learning. So um, learners who don't identify with uh, typical passive learning, like uh, reading and video, uh, tend to uh, have a better increased chance of uh, knowledge retention by 60% using interactive learning models, such as constructivism. The idea of constructivism is uh, very much, uh, in a way, um, open range learning, sort of. Uh, so you've kind of got these five areas of engagement. So you're looking at the idea of the topic, right? So you tell them, you tell your students about that topic. You allow them to explore that topic. You allow them to evaluate why that topic relates to them and explain why it's important that there are lessons being learned within this topic that can you, then you yourself can evaluate and extend your expertise as a facilitator. The idea of an educator is evolving. Um, we are becoming, I mean, with, with AI models, with, with the information that's already out there, um, with the speed at which people are learning, uh, younger generations are already accustomed to technology much quicker than older generations, even myself uh, being in my late 20s, I still feel like uh, younger people learn quicker than I do, even though I try and, t try and stay on top of things like this as quick as possible. So that being said, um, you know, there's, there's always ways that um, knowledge is being passed on, but in other ways, we're also learning from younger people on how to quickly engage with, with content. Um, some areas of my expertise were uh, user experience design. So as we're designing these 3D environments, what are the ways at which we can lead people throughout a space? These are called primary, secondary, and tertiary areas of engagement. So because this is usually used for VR headsets, you've got someone with a headset on, um, or you're using your PC or laptop. So uh, whatever's closest to the user is going to be most important. If you want to lead people out, if you want them to explore, you need indicators to lead them there. That is what the red area, the secondary area, is used for. You know, arrows that are stickered onto the ground that lead me out, uh, signage that I can see, that I can lead myself to the next room. So we'll take a look at what that example can do. But yeah, all of that leads to just a really good cycle of learning um, about replicated exploration through interactive learning. Um, these are all just principles that any user experience designer should be using. 
So uh, in terms of Frame, and um, I don't work for Frame, I'm not a salesman, uh, maybe someday, but uh, this, the, the idea here is that they have plenty of use cases. This is a tool that's already being used in educational institutions. Um, so uh, from robotics championships to uh, art galleries um, to uh, MIT Media Labs, where they're just showcasing their best work. Uh, there's actually already entire schools that uh, use this platform. It, it is a virtual campus with uh, an entire staff, uh, an entire department for uh, each subject. Um, so uh, all of that is fully interactive. It's called the Edu Metaverse. It's out of uh, Australia. So uh, global, global learners, global team. Um, so plenty of good use cases there where they're, um, uh, they're, <laughs> they're uh, certifying uh, people with uh, high school diplomas to, um, to, to have you know, higher, uh, pathways to higher education just using fully remote learning, fully interactive remote learning as well. Um, so, in terms of like, this is more of a specific use case, uh, use cases, um, and, and this is pretty relevant for other institutions like the University of Idaho, who uses Canvas as their main learning platform. Um, there was an emphasis uh, when I put this together to kind of focus in a little bit on like how can AI can assist the educator in this space. So, Frame. When you build a space, you've got your frame link, um, which uh, there's actually a, a link here that we'll look at. Well, I'll just share it in a bit. But basically, you'll get a frame link, and how you can use AI to help you is you can tell the frame, uh, sorry, tell the AI, like ChatGPT, you can tell it, all right, take this link and create an embedded link. Now, what an embedded link does is it creates a little interactive box, and that box can be posted on a website. You can post this on your personal website, on your portfolio. You can post this embedded link anywhere on the internet that takes what's called iframe, which is pretty standardized at this point. So I'm just going through it again. Copy the link, tell ChatGPT, uh, create an embedded code iframe link for me, please. And yeah, I'm just kind of also probably moving pretty fast. I'm going to slow down here. Um, yep, there it is. Create the link. And it is giving me that link. I'm just going to copy that now. A little copy code button. And in Canvas, they have an embedded code button, which is pretty big innovation in my opinion. And all I got to do is paste it. So same thing with Google Classrooms as well as other educational platforms. This is actually a huge barrier for uh, educational institutions, which is, all right, this is a cool tool. This is great. This is a learning platform. But how do we integrate it? Like, what is the specific way we can integrate it? Because we don't want to onboard our students to another level of privacy that they need to go through. That's years of bureaucracy that we need to cut through. So um, the ways that I approach integration is, what are your current platforms, and how can we already adapt to those platforms? So yeah, just in summary, uh, embedded link maker. You know, there, you don't actually need GPT to do that, um, but there's you know uh, other embedded link makers that do that. I, would be, I wouldn't be surprised if Frame cut out the middleman right there, where they just say, hey, um, if you want to create an embedded link, we'll just create it for you. They'll probably pull that API at some point this year. And then paste that into your learning platform. Uh, to me, this sounds very simple, um, that integration piece. Um, so these are ongoing conversations that I have with educational institutions, um, University of Idaho included. Um, so there are similar platforms, but again, just thinking of usability, accessibility, um, access to um, not only the educators, but for the learners as well. Uh, there's other platforms that are web-based similar to this, uh, similar uh, lens of accessibility too. So Spatial, Engage, Gather, Blocksmith, Mural, Spline, and Portal are all uh, XR web tools where the internet is the glue that holds them all together, where the devices are the outlets for engagement for those platforms. So um, yeah, we're actually um, going to look at it, just a sample project here in just a moment. Um, but as we kind of think about this and as I showcase it, and maybe we'll have some um, people join us here, um, things to think about is, all right, let's say I have a project that uh, implies interactivity. Um, I know, you know one of your student projects here that was uh, pitching earlier in this room um, you guys had talked about a, um, you know, your game design platform, right? So you know, it's it's really just a matter of like, all right, um, I'm 
you know, I want to make my learning tool interactive. So what are the ways that I can use interactivity and maybe the constructivist learning models to write, um, integrate into your onboarding process? I don't know. You know, maybe it's not obviously using a web tool that's already out there. You're creating your own tool, but the usability of that tool goes through you know, a lot of different types of testing. Um, and of course, as an institution, I'm not sure how many admins we have here, um, but uh, addressing those uh, resources that are needed. Uh, usually it's consultations, uh, it might be uh, interactive media integration specialists, um, or it might just be, all right, well, what's our current PD, professional development network, and how do we um, just add to it? So, and then the thing that's next is really just to try it. Um, so uh, if you'd like, you can scan this QR code and just join on your phone. Um, and I'm gonna just join you guys as well. But I would also like to wonder if you have any questions. Um, oh, I guess I should keep that up for a little bit longer. Then I will pull it up. Uh, any questions um, any of you guys have? Actually, I'm also gonna do this. If this is gonna work, the QR code is also right there. I'm gonna actually load myself into it. Okay, let's see here. I'm just gonna switch my camera. Oop. All right, yep, so they've added a little bit of onboarding, which is great. Oops, hit refresh, that's fine. All right, as people are loading in, um, we will go ahead and start sharing a little bit more about the space. So um, as a deeper uh, demonstration, all I'm using here is my uh, keyboard to move around the space. Uh, this is in the web browser. Again, there's nothing downloaded. There's no software. There's no sign-in information needed. This is a guest user uh, coming into another guest user's uh, space. These can be password protected, so these follow HERPA guidelines. Uh, these can be instance-based, so they're only available during a certain amount of time. As a Zoom link is shared, as a Zoom link is uh, password protected um, and integrated into a scheduling platform, uh, so can these spaces. So someone has taken us to, re uh, to the reservoir. I'm just gonna close that sphere just for a moment. Um, as, yep, so we've got like live kind of users here. We've got other people in the audience that are kind of walking around with us. Um, yeah, so you know, it's really just a matter of exploration at this point. This is, again, that learning space. So um, in terms of onboarding, I have this first room that's being made. Um, you do wanna have uh, uh, tutorial controls available as one of the first things that people see. Um, there's documentation that Frame offers to just drag and drop this uh, right away. Um, yeah, just kinda like putting, a, putting some visual prompt, some things to get, um, to let people do things while they wait. Definitely uh, having videos is, is very helpful. Um, so just a matter of um, you know thinking of what the possibilities are. So, um, and then of course some indicators right into the next space, but these are also very much led by a, uh, a moderator or a facilitator of uh, the learning. And of course the emojis, can't forget that. They are actually working on new updates as we speak. There are all sorts of things. I, I don't have edit mode enabled right now, but um, they're look, they're, they have um, integrated um, AI uh, image model and text generation embedded into their platform. Um, again, mostly just for educators to have quick access to learning content. So if they need to populate a space with a certain type of tree from a certain type of environment, um, there is a database to pull from that the uh, generator can do. So uh, yeah, um, thank you again for everyone who participated and came today. I'd be happy to answer any other questions that may have come up, um, or I'll be around Hackfort uh, the rest of the day and tomorrow, um, just to, uh, if you guys have anything you'd like to uh, ask me or talk about. Um, doing some other talks as well, um, 
later in the space, more casual, freeform stuff. Um, got some augmented reality uh, stuff going on in the interactive uh, expo space. So, yeah, thanks again, everyone. Any questions, I guess, off the top? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So the question was, where are these links hosted, and um, you know, where? Yeah, where are they accessible? Where Where do they live? So they live on the frame.io um, website, the main frame. So you actually um, you create an account as a creator. Um, there's no. I mean, you just use your Google account. You can use your Microsoft account. Um, you create an, uh, an account. Um, and so uh, there's plenty of resources here. But when you log in, you have access to their dashboard, their creator tool set, and Everything you create is within that experience. So, um, yeah, if I were to log in, I don't, let's see if, sure. Yes, yep. Yeah, so it's, um, you can have up to, well, I guess technically 22 viewers, eight interactive, but you can have up to three free projects as anybody. And then what you can do as an educator or as an administrator is you can apply for a, um, an educator license um, that just opens up more rooms that you have available, more participants for those rooms. Um, you know, you, you definitely want at least 25 to 50 user capacity availability. So for free accounts, you don't have that. You only have like eight users. Um, so that's just multi-user. So a big nuance is single versus multi-user. You can have infinite people in a space, up to three spaces for free. Um, and that expands as you go through a monthly, uh, monthly charge if you want to get to pro and premium. But yeah, there are educator access points. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just on the same page. But. Oh, I don't. I'm not too sure. You said, what was that last one? Uh, Moodle. Moodle. Hmm. OK, I, I'm not familiar with that. Um, but it's worth thinking to. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised as long as it takes iframe or A-frame uh, components, then I would say yes. Um, because at that point, you're just creating the, the embedded code and just dropping it in. So yeah. All right, thank you again, everyone.